And this is the danger of something like Kanye West. Is he right? I don't know. I don't know, I haven't heard enough. Let him talk. When he talks more, I can, I can research more. And the thing happens when people talk. We find out if they're full of shit or not. If you want to find out if a person's full of shit, don't interrupt them and try to prove them wrong. Let them talk. But by the way, this is why we're so terrified of letting people talk. Have you ever had this position before where you somebody, somebody said something that was completely wrong and you want to talk about it and they won't even let you talk about it? You know? Begs the question, what are you afraid of? We know what they're afraid of. It's all ego. Imagine if it turns out you're right. Imagine if they made like big life decisions based off of something that they thought was untrue, and now you're about to prove them wrong, and they have to go back on all of that stuff. So wasn't that the most brilliant thing you've ever heard in your life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So part of the problem might be that, that you're living something inauthentic. And then people will look at you and just be like, I really like who you are, but of course it's not who you really are. And then we complain that people don't know us for who we really are. Well, have you given people an opportunity to? Have you given them a chance to see you as you really are, to like you as you are? And part of the problem might be that we just kind of assume, man, no one would like me. I mean, how many of you, I wonder, don't raise your hands. I wonder how many of you are just like that sad, mopey, crying, weepy mess of a person who's always like dying inside, but you're smiling on the outside. And then you're like, nobody understands. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe it's because you haven't given them an opportunity to understand. Or maybe it might be that you don't even understand yourself quite yet. And so that doesn't mean that you shouldn't want to be understood and accepted, but, you know, be charitable with people. Like, we, we might say, I mean, tell me if this ever sounds familiar to any of you. Like, I don't know, man, like, I like somebody and I've given them every sign in the world that I like them. But they just don't seem to get it. Well, maybe you're not being as clear as you think that you are. Maybe the person that you're talking to is particularly obtuse and slow, and you have to be really, really, really damn clear about that. You know, maybe the person, if they, think, if they think lesser of themselves, and by the way, the lesser a person thinks of themselves, the clearer you're going to have to be with that person, because they're not going to see it in themselves. They're not going to understand it. Good. What else? Yeah. Um, this could also be like the more uh, controversial your thoughts are, not in like a bad way, but so much more different than everyone else. For example, you could see like, uh, let, let, let's say nowadays with Kanye, right? It would be like, ah yes, Kanye was right about some things. Yes, you're right about that. Um, and most people would say, no, but he's a Nazi, you know? Yeah. Some people live their lives this way. They figure out what somebody thinks, and then they just go the complete opposite. Yeah. I, think that, I think that Trump probably could have avoided being impeached if he agreed with the impeachment. If he had just said, yeah, you should definitely impeach me, I bet he probably would have been impeached. Because then people would have gone the opposite direction. No way, liar, Nazi, we're not going to impeach you. Because <laughs> people would, would set their whole lives in complete opposition to whatever it is that he was saying. And there are a lot of people like this that we look at, that we, we feel like we can't even... Um, good example, there's this guy who I, I like a lot named Lex Friedman. He has a, a podcast, um, but he's a, he's a professor of, of artificial intelligence. He's an engineer over at MIT, one of the top universities in the whole world. He's also a jiu-jitsu black belt, and he's also kind of a robot himself. When he talks, he talks like this, and he, he will joke about how he has no emotions, and then he'll <laughs> laugh, because that's what the humans do, right? The humans laugh? Okay, so he'll laugh. Um, what's that? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, he's very human with this. Um, and he has guests on, and like, from all walks of life, he has like world leaders, he has like MMA fighters, he has academics, he has politicians, he's got some really interesting people on his show. And one of the great things that he does is he'll talk to like, let's say for example he talks to a, a Republican, and then he'll ask them, can you steel man the Democratic position for me? To steel man means give me the best version of their arguments. Now, if I asked you to think of a position that you're really strongly in favor of, and I ask you, can you steel man the other side for me? Can you tell me why the other side is right? So many people, it's interesting on his show that these are academic people, these are smart people, and they struggle to present the other side very, very strongly. They, they'll say, well, I mean, the other side's going to say, 
you know, they're in favor of equality, but they're really not. What they're really after is, you know, it's like, okay, you can't even take a, a few minutes to give the best possible version of the other side. That means they don't really understand the other side. They, 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 you know, they're, they're so locked into their own ideology that they'll never be able to change their minds, even if a better position comes along. You know, it takes some, some wisdom to do that. It takes some humility to be able to do that. Because you have to acknowledge, I might not have all the right answers. I might be wrong about a couple of things. And that, of course, is a really uncomfortable place for us to be. And especially in, 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 in his context, because Friedman's doing a podcast where he's got a couple million subscribers. He's got several million views. So you know millions of people are going to see this. There's a guy who, um, his name is Michael Malice. He's a really smart dude. We're going to, I think... We might have a quote from him in this class towards, towards the end of the school year. It might be this class. But anyway, he's an anarchist. He believes that there should be no government at all. And when Friedman asked him, can you steel man the, the, the libertarian, the southern position, the guy did an incredible job. And he like, took on the role of, of the libertarian arguing the points. And so you, you, now you look at that guy and you say, oh yeah, he's smart. This guy understands the other side. He's not just biased. You know, and this is a quick thing that will point to people. Oh, you just don't like that because you're biased, because you're prejudiced, or whatever. That's a way of discounting a person entirely. You know, like I was just watching a press conference this morning from the mayor of Chicago. Her name is Lori Lightfoot. Um, the uh, Chicago airport has essentially become a, a homeless shelter. They have hundreds of homeless people camping out inside of the airport over there. And it was talked about, I guess, on the news uh, by Tucker Carlson, who's on Fox. I didn't see it. But a reporter asked her, was asking in a press conference about this. Hundreds of people who were sleeping in, in the airport, there have been assaults uh, from the homeless people, you know, theft, so forth. And she just says, well, hold on, consider the source. This comes from Tucker Carlson and Fox News. And then the woman asked her, do you want to see the pictures? We have the pictures of the airport. We have live video of the airport. She's like, no, that, that was originally reported by, well, is it true or not? Well, you know where it came from. Who cares? Was it true or was it not? In other words, it came from the person who's on the complete opposite side of her. So therefore, she will refuse to ever hear anything that comes from, from a view outside of her own. And this is the danger of something like Kanye West. Is he right? I don't know. I, don't know. I haven't heard enough. Let him talk. When he talks more, I can, I can research more. And the thing happens when people talk. We find out if they're full of shit or not. If you want to find out if a person is full of shit, don't interrupt them and try to prove them wrong. Let them talk. Let them talk. Because the less a person has to talk, the more right they're going to be. Think about this. The, more, the less you let a person talk, the more right they're going to be. At least the more right they're going to sound. Let a person talk, they're going to expose that they don't know anything. This was Socrates' approach to people. Talk to people, ask them questions. If you ask a person questions, you find out what they know and what they really don't know. And it's amazing what people don't know. Try this with your teachers. Don't ask why, 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 like a five-year-old, but keep asking questions, and you're going to find out that eventually you're going to, most, many of them will say, look, man, it's on the test, okay? Just memorize it. And it might be true. I'm not saying it's not true. All I'm saying is that you can really find out what a person believes if you just let them talk. But by the way, this is why we're so terrified of letting people talk. You know? I don't know if you ever had this position before where you, somebody, somebody said something that was completely wrong, and you want to talk about it, and they won't even let you talk about it. You know? Begs the question, what are you afraid of? We know what they're afraid of. It's all ego, man. Imagine if it turns out you're right. Imagine if they've made like big life decisions based off of something that they thought was untrue, and now you're about to prove them wrong, and they have to go back on all of that stuff. You know? It's unreal. So... So the more powerful and original, and that's the thing, it's, power, it's a powerful mind. It's not just a smart person. The mind is, it's a powerful mind. And original a mind. I think I was, maybe I mentioned this to you guys. It's an interesting exercise to start thinking about the things that you believe, the things that you think, even the things that you feel, and ask yourself how much of that is original to you, or how much of that is just something that you've taken from someplace else and you use as your own. We you plagiarize our ideas. We plagiarize our, our ideas. Some of you do it quite literally, by the way. I see it in your journals. You guys write down things that I say word for word. You don't give me credit. It's terrible. It's terrible. You plagiarize me. I'm going to wait till you have some money, and then I'm going to sue you. <laughs> but if a mind is original, it comes up with a, an actual original idea. Think about how, how odd that is to come up with an idea that's never existed before in the history of the world. 
You know, that's why when we look at some of these folks like, like Aldous Huxley, incredibly original mind, and this is a guy who never picked up a sword because he never, never conquered anything, and yet and he's been dead for, you know, don't make me do math, 50-something years, 50 years, 50 years, he's been dead for 50, no, 60 years, God damn it, he's been dead for 60 years. <laughs> so what? I feel that it's true. He's been dead for 60 years, and yet people still read his books, people still talk about him. Why? Because he has a, an original mind. If you look at a guy like Friedrich Nietzsche, this guy, everything that this guy said was so incredibly fresh and original. And one of the tests of an original mind is that when I tell you what the guy says, or what the guy believed, you sit there and go, well, yeah, duh. Like I tell you about Sigmund Freud, and that he believed that, that early childhood experiences shape who we become. You would sit there and go, duh. Every sixth grader knows that. Nobody knew it before Freud. This is a guy who, whose mind was so powerful and original that today we take it for granted. Well, of course he was right. Duh. I mean, what do you mean no one knew that before? Oh my God, we were so primitive. You know, we stand on the shoulders of giants, the people who've come before us, and we stand on the shoulders of their ideas, and that's what we call common sense. It never has been. But the more powerful and original your mind, you can tell if your mind is powerful. You can tell if your mind is original. There are some symptoms of it. One of the symptoms is that you will incline towards solitude. Not just solitude, like you have to go be by yourself once in a while, but he's talking about a religion of solitude. Like you follow this thing like it's a religion. You have to go be by yourself because that's the only place that you can be free from influence. If you're around people all the time, you're constantly taking in influence. If you have AirPods in your ears all the time, you're constantly taking in influence. This is one of the dangers is that all the, you know, having like a constant stream of, of, of entertainment and media coming at us guarantees and promises one thing. You will not be able to have original deep ideas. You will not be able, possibly, it's not possible, to think deep thoughts, to understand deep ideas. Because understanding deep ideas doesn't happen in 10, 20 second bites between, you know, between videos. It, has to, it takes time, it takes hours. It takes hours of being by yourself and thinking about things. And then as soon as we don't have you know, entertainment in front of us for a few minutes, we start getting fidgety. We're thinking about, man, do you think you've been programmed? It's funny, we'll look at, we'll look at you know, going to church and people say, because we're very, we're very edgy, I don't go to church, so all they want is your money. But not like Starbucks, right? Not like YouTube. They don't take any money from me. No, they take something worse. They take your identity and they sell it. They take your life and who you are and you sell it. And the problem is we don't even have a problem with it. We're like, okay. <laughs> Tell all of my browsing history, tell all of my searches, tell all of my viewing habits. Not even, by the way, they, tell, they, they take how long you spend looking at articles and things. They sell all of that, and we're like, okay, okay. Why? So that they can send stuff to you to, to distract you even faster. And intuitively, we know this. And although we know it to be true, we still shrug our shoulders. That sucks. And the reason it sucks is because there are a few of you out there who are deep thinkers. <clears throat> and take a guess, who do you think is going to run things? And the rest of us who, who are not deep thinkers, who are not taking time to, to process what's happening around us, we're the ones who are going to put on the Oculus and just like slip off into a, into a virtual reality and wait to die. <clears throat> it's true. Sure, because that means that whatever it is that we're experiencing on the other side of this interface is more interesting to us than real life. And that, does not, that is not a vote for, for, for virtual reality. That's a warning about your own life. And the things that we experience over there are far more interesting than things that happen over here. I mean, we already see it. Many of us are staring at a two-dimensional screen rather than taking in the world around us, rather than taking in wisdom and knowledge. What are you doing with a two-dimensional screen? How much more when it's completely immersive? So much more. So much more. So the more powerful your mind, the more original your mind, the more you're going to not just seek solitude, but you're going to engage in it the way that a, a devotee engages in their religion. So if you want to be a deep thinker, if you want to be an original mind, if you want to think, that's what you have to do. Go be by yourself for a while. And if you don't, just put on the Oculus. I'm sure that you'll find some wonderful products being sold to you on the other side of the screen.
They won't be real, but they'll feel like it, which a lot of times is enough. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? Happy sunny Thursday. There's a little bit of sun right now.